Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and I've got a weird type of laziness in which I will do so many things uh, if, if I'm if, to stall, basically. It's like, well, I'm not a lazy piece of shit because I was busy the entire day. Well, you only did that to stall too. <laughs> I don't want to do cardio. I got out of there. It's nice out. You, know, you go to the park. It's just, I don't know. It's just so much easier just to do a bunch of things at the house than go out and do that. So I'm gonna go do some cardio. Uh, but anyway, um, uh, it's difficult for me to do these videos and I kind of hem and haw about it because it's really, really easy for it to come off as, ha ha, you're poor. It's more of like, bruh, or sis, or they, or them. It's not like I haven't spent four years warning you. Um, so at some point you just realize that some people are not going to listen ever, but the hope is that the next person who's in a similar situation will listen, you know? Uh, I'm not trying to make you poor, I'm trying to make you money, you know? And sometimes the way you make money is you go elsewhere. I've actually heard, you know, tales of people just getting so done with comics they leave, and, uh, they're always, they always do better. <laughs> they get a normie job. Now, the economy is weird right now. It's weird. But there actually is a lot of jobs, and you're in the catbird seat. That seems very old. When did people stop saying that regularly? You're in the catbird seat there. Uh, Jasper? <laughs> I don't know. Um, uh, for negotiating. If you have any kind of skills, or you can just work a cash register, do an interview. They'll get the offer. Just bump it up. Just bump it up. You're, you know, 18, first job, cashier. You know, you got a calculator on your phone. You have some experience. They offer you 12, say you'll work for 15. Just ask for, they offer you $15 an hour, ask for 20. You don't know. Like, they really, really need people uh, uh, to work uh, regular jobs right now. But when I hear people just completely quit, and uh, they're like, you know, comics is just for, not for me. I've been pushing on this pull door for 10, 15, 20 years. And when they go get a regular job, they always do better. <laughs> because uh, comics is so, financially, it's so unstable for most people. Especially if you play the mainstream game. That literally a random job off of usajobs.gov or Indeed or whatever. It's been a while since I actually applied for a normie job. Where is it's still it's still like simply hired indeed. There was another one. One of the ones was really good because basically you could just like once you uploaded your uploaded your resume, you could just like click a box and it would do everything for you. Uh, I hate when they would they they're like, oh one click application and then the one click is to go to their old fashioned website and go through like 20 no 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 I want an actual one click where my resume with a little cover letter goes directly uh, to the uh, employer we're not playing no, no, this is not 1998 I'm not going through 20 pages of filling in all the fields uh, so anyway um, there's a point at which comics has been pushing you out so much that it's like it, it's like a polyp forming you know to push a, a splinter out like it's not that you're you're not doing well. It's that the industry is actively pushing you out. And that's the point where you say, what do I do? Do I just stop trying to do comics? Do I make it entirely a hobby? In which case I would just have to break even? Or am, am I going to try crowdfunding? Am I going to go to Hollywood? So one of the ways that uh, I was going to say subsidized, but if you make no money, it's more of a phantom subsidy. One of the ways that uh, comic book pros, especially SJW comic book pros, have kind of phantom subsidized themselves is to say, you know, I'm just barely getting by in comics, or I'm actually losing money, but Mark Millar made $30 million from Netflix. This person made this, uh, this person has a TV show. And the thing is, um, for a very, very, very small percentage of creators, you know, you got the Robert Kirkmans, the Mark Millars, there is some actual money to be made in Hollywood. Um, but for most people, no. So Neon, uh, who is, you know, one of the people who runs the Clownfish, I, it's always so much simpler if, like, 
his, he's clownfish, but is, you know, it's him and his wife. So neither one of them is clownfish individually, but together they are clownfish TV. Uh, so Neon was talking about, and I believe he was a writing partner with his wife uh, creatively. And he basically said uh, he, he spent a decade trying to do the traditional thing, chase that publishing deal, chase that, you know, contract and, and chase the, uh, the dream, the Hollywood dream. When I say Netflix, I mean any kind of Hollywood streaming crackle, whatever. I just say Netflix because pe- most people understand what you mean when you say Netflix. And he chased it for a while, a decade. And he almost lost his house. And now he's doing great. He's doing great. I mean, as far as I know, uh, I, I look at his views, you know, those CPMs. Although I read that it's the best if you do a financial channel, which I started a financial channel. <laughs> I literally started it because a friend like texted me. They're like, uh, financial channels uh, have the highest CPMs. It's like, ya yeah boy, started one that day. Although uh, the, the deal is that my, it's, it's still kind of niche. So, and they changed the uh, monetization. So like I met the, the membership very easily, like within like, I don't know, four or five days, I hit the thousand members, but it's like 4,000 view hours. It's like, hey, <laughs> okay, that's, that's gonna be a while. It's gonna be a while. Yeah, it will be. So um, there's been some very prominent, God, I hate blind items. I hate blind items. But like I said, having been very, very, very poor, coin star poor I know what it's like to be broke I have borrowed money I have borrowed money at the ages of these people and at older you know from friends from family from credit cards at insane interest rates so I've been in that position I just did a video on my other channel about basically budgeting when stuff like this happens and the answer is that you can basically have all the same stuff you want you just got to be smarter about how you buy it how you prepare it you know cook for yourself um, but uh, we've seen people chase this Hollywood dream for decades. Uh, Frank Miller, Howard Chaikin, Grant Morrison in the 90s, they all kind of left comics for a while to make a huge go at Hollywood. Uh, Kelly Sue DeConnick and Matt Fraction, her husband, they, they made a huge thing. What was it, two or three years ago? We just started our own production company or, or some kind of thing, and they pitched all their stuff. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. Then you get situations like Max where a uh, second year in the industry, maybe the third, gets a TV deal. And I mean, a very fast TV deal. I think it was kind of prepped beforehand. It was kind of prefabricated uh, because I talk to people who work in Hollywood. They're like, this never happens. What happens is you're gonna get meetings. And there's been a lot of, especially during the pandemic, comic book pros, especially SJW ones, always hum- humble bragging that they got a meeting. Oh. Just got done with a Zoom pitch call, going to another one. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Are you getting paid for that? It doesn't matter. You just got an option. Here's the deal. Most of those options are incredibly low amounts of money. Like if it was an Indiegogo or a Kickstarter, you wouldn't be impressed. But somehow you put movie deal on it or YA publishing deal, those ones are the worst. Those ones, it's like, hey, you might make $40,000 five years from now, maybe read your contract. There's a lot of caveats in there. Uh, so the YA one is a total just like illusion because, you know, for every, you know, one super successful one that becomes a movie, there are literally a thousand that don't. And that YA publishing, it's not like comics. You know those Vidayala <laughs> and Gail Simone comics that read like something lower than a first draft? No, 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 my friend. Hell no. When you work in traditional publishing, you're going to literally go through year to years of rewriting. You're going to spend whatever, two, three months to write your first draft. And you're going to turn it in by the, you know, the date in your contract. And they're going to, they're going to say, great. Uh, so we're going to send this to a sensitivity reader. And you're like, oh, no, wait, I'm the same race sexuality as my main character. Yes, but you're not as all of the characters. So we're going to send it out to a sensitivity reader. And we're just going to revise. Oh, how much do I get paid for that? No, you don't. <laughs> you don't get paid. Also, you don't get paid till it comes out and it actually makes a profit. And then net plus 60, 90, 180, whatever, you get paid. So you will start on that manuscript and you will make 
three years later. Um, so it's a sham. For the, the risk versus reward, for the percentage of success, it's so low that I would say to not even try it at all. I see uh, Ethan talk about this, and they'll say, what about a cyber frog cartoon? He's like, eh, it's fine, I guess. It's not what, what I'm concentrating on. Because when you get those deals, I mean, uh, I remember uh, James Hudnall uh, passed away a few years ago. And uh, with respect, his situation was not good, uh, health-wise, financial-wise. He had a TV show on Fox, produced by Chris Carter, at the height of Chris Carter's fame. Chris Carter is the guy who created The X-Files. And James died in abject poverty, and he lived his last few decades in that, essentially. Hollywood is designed to make Hollywood successful, not you. There are people who get lucky, you know, George Lucas negotiating for the merchandising rights for Star Wars, when they're like, eh, those uh, Logan's Run uh, puzzles didn't sell very well. That's fine, George. Just go ahead and you'll have the merchandising for Star Wars. Then you have situations like Mark Millar, who's able to negotiate for things because he has a proven success. The thing is, your first success is essentially a giveaway. You're going to give away what you would get from that. The producers and the studios are going to make money, but you don't have anything to prove. You don't get... Okay, so how many TV shows do you have? Zero? You don't get to negotiate for shit. You will take whatever they give and you'll be happy. And your and your agent will too. You make money on the second thing. In most cases. There are exceptions. But um, Mark Millar was able to negotiate for $30 million because he already had wanted... What was that, like a decade ago? And Kingsman, that was like... I don't know. That was pretty close. Eight, nine years ago. Something like that. Maybe seven. Um, so he could point to wanted and Kingsman 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 and so they could say oh you actually deliver so yeah so I don't know like what uh, they might not have understood these ones uh, you know some of the stuff but they're like eh, it, yeah you got a lot and you got a track record so yeah let's let's you know uh, give you a lot of money because he's proven these people don't have that I mean we've seen people get a TV option for their series and then they're selling bootleg Judge Dredd merch so they can afford coach airfare to a convention where they got to pay for everything. Again, I want to be sensitive about this. I've been poor. I've been more poor than comic book pros. And that that takes some work. It's actually difficult to be more poor than, you know, a comic book pro. But I've been there and I know how bad that sucks. But you're chasing this thing and it's absolutely an illusion. You remember the cartoons where they're 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 in the desert and they're all, they're dying and they, they they see the oasis. Yes, there are some palm trees in the desert with a little bit of water at the bottom, but most of that is just you hallucinating because you're dehydrated and you're dying in the desert. And that's how it is for you know comics. They're dehydrated from money, from actual financial success. So they see a one in a thousand success story and they're like. One in a thousand. Those are good odds. I'll bet my entire career and you know financial stability on one in a thousand odds. And honestly, I think it's higher than one in a thousand. For comic book pros, it might be one five thousand, one in ten thousand. They get a really, and that's people who have you know been published and you know done stuff for different companies. Yeah, I'd say it's way higher than one in a thousand. One in ten thousand might be too high, but um, don't don't. Don't bet your career, your financial stability, your retirement, your peace of mind on Netflix and YA. No, no. That Here's the deal. There's a better success rate in crowdfunding than there is in these other two ventures. And, and like Neon said, you're just going to, you never get there. Just like in real life, you, you never get to the oasis. It's always just, oh, I'm almost there. No, you're not going to get there. I know people who have worked success, you know, successful careers in Hollywood for a decade. They still live in apartments because you know the, it's you know a, a house is still out of reach. And what are you going to tell you know getting a loan? Oh, I've gotten these five deals over the last you know eight years. Oh, can you guarantee five more deals in the next eight years? No, I can literally lose my career tomorrow over a tweet from 12 years ago. 
You know, you can't rely. Most of the people I know who get successful, when things are hot, they realize it's hot and it's temporary. They go, this is when I buy property. This is when, you know, I, I put a lot, you know, uh, into, uh, you know, I buy a lot of stock in an up and coming, you know, tech company. This is when I get to mutual funds. Like, it's not going to always be like this. The weird thing is they, they think it, they bank on it always being like this and it's not even good. You know how many people of these, you know, again, sensitively, I want to say, a lot of these people mocking me and Ethan and others, they literally can't quit their day job. They don't make enough in comics. And they've worked for, you know, quote, real companies. It's very, very unfortunate. And, you know, I'm not much of a union guy, but actual organization would probably... Here's the deal. There's just, there's so many people who want to do this. There's more people who want to work in comics than want to buy comics. So if they strike, they'll just find a bunch of, you know, successful TV writers who's like, oh, I always like the idea of writing comics. That sounds fun. What? $75 a page? Yeah, whatever. Goes on my resume. You can just churn through a bunch of, you know, Law and Order, you know, CSI uh, writers forever, indefinitely, as a little fun side project. You actually don't need, you know, experienced uh, comic book writers. So don't bet your future on YA, on Netflix, on Hollywood. It is an illusion. It is an oasis. I mean, there is water and palm trees in certain parts of any desert. But it's very unlikely that that mirage you're going to is actually real. You're hallucinating. Concentrate, you know, on comics. And give it, you know, five years. And if in five years it's not paying all your bills, and remember, breaking even, you got to factor in your time. Your time is worth money. In fact, if you want to be technical, your time is the only thing that's worth money. That's your life. You're chopping off little sections of your life. So you, you could be successful, you know, get, quote, steady work. Oh, every month or so I get an eight-page backup story in an anthology. But give it a good solid five years. And if you're not making your full income off of it, bounce. There are lots of normal jobs that are fun, that are interesting. Uh, you can make friends. And uh, comics is probably best as a phase for most people. I love how my topics always last for the length of the drive. <laughs> anyway, Knife Hand Blind Spot, Rock and Roll Ninja, links in the description, and I will have new comic reviews up all this weekend. Bye.